Buen día. Buenos días. Bonjour. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Barcelona. Welcome to the School of Architecture of Barcelona. Sorry for this uh, delay. We were uh, many of us. We were in another presentation for the local students, so that's why we start a bit late. This is not uh, common in this school. We are quite sharp with the schedules, so this Latin myth about being late—it's just a myth. Um, so. Um, we are aware that yesterday Alicia, Natalia, Lupe and Maria just walked you around the school, showed you uh, about the premises, explained you about the administrative process that you are following um, here. Uh, but today, uh, I didn't present myself, I'm Eulalia Gomez Escoda, Vice Dean of International Relations. Uh, and me together with uh, some professors responsible from uh, the different thematic areas um, uh, of the school. We are going to explain you briefly about the courses that we are offering so uh, you can make a kind of choice um, in order to enroll what suits you better. I will go deeper on this um, later. You are, we are now here in this building this is an extension uh, that uh, Coderc made of the original school or the school um, that uh, kind of forced the opening of the Diagonal Avenue when the school was founded or when the school was opened here. It was not in this day that you, you see here, but when the school was opened in this building, uh, uh, it was together, it was built together with the metro station, with Zona Universitaria metro station, but many of uh, the plots around the school were fields, so the city did not arrive to the, to the uh, university campus, and the presence of the university campus was one of the main reasons for which Barcelona grew in this direction. Uh, the school uh, existed uh, before uh, this building. The school was founded in 1871, uh, but previously, prior to this, um, uh, the, the, there, there are two uh, main um, uh, epochs of this school. First, as happens in many European schools of architectures, as part of the Beaux Arts uh, studies, then as a technical school, and then uh, in 1973, it became one of the founding man members of what we know as UPC, the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. So somehow we have this transition between the Beaux Arts and the, and the more uh, artistic studies to this uh, technical uh, branch that uh, kind of uh, makes us uh, being together with engineers uh, on the campus north. Uh, so the school can be considered uh, old, the university can be considered young in the sense that in last year we celebrated the 50 years of the technical university, but keep in mind that um, uh, we have this uh, ancient tradition, if you want to uh, say this. And you are in, uh, I'm not um, objective, I have to say, but you are uh, in one of the best schools of architectures in the world. According to these uh, uh, world university rankings that you know that are kind of a thermometer uh, from which we measure the productivity in universities uh, all around the world, um, the School of Architecture in the UPC is ranked as the first, like the best one in Spain. So um, here we are. We are among the 10 best uh, schools of architectures in Europe and we are among the 20 best universities or schools of architectures in the world. Uh, the school is big, uh, as you have seen uh, in these uh, two days that you have spent with us. We are many of us, but still we like to say that we are a closed school, that somehow 
even if we are these 3,500 students every year, there are new uh, 300 new students uh, that uh, start um, studying architecture. And we are more than 300 teachers, but yet it's possible to walk around the corridors and know the people and somehow we are a huge, big um, family. So don't be scared about the size of the school. The more we are, the merrier always, because there are many differences. It's uh, always easier to find a group uh, of interest. So um, I insist, take this uh, big size of the school as a one of the best qualities that the uh, EdSAP can offer you. We are a big in number of uh, people working here, and we are also big um, in our facilities. Um, we have these uh, three buildings, uh, the highest one built in the 70s, uh, together with the Diagonal Avenue, as I was explaining you. The extension in which we are now um, uh, gather that was built by Coderc, the modern architect, the Catalan modern architect in the, in the mid 80s. And then this new library that it's placed it in the floor plan like uh, here, you were uh, there yesterday, um, that was built um, uh, last decade. Um, you will find that many of the theory classes are held in this Coderc building like the workshops, uh, Urbanistica, Proyectos, um, Representation, are mainly held in the tallest building, but there are some exceptions. And it's very common to have to switch from one building to the other. Uh, they are connected, they are indoors. Uh, you can also go from one to the other um, through uh, the courtyards, but uh, it's quite of, um, uh, common to have to switch from one uh, room to the other uh, during the the day. We are big in number, we are big in uh, facilities, and we are also big in our friends and our um, connections abroad. Uh, the school uh, has this um, flow of students, we have connection, uh, the numbers uh, can, can change a bit from one year to the other, but we have connections with more than 70 schools uh, all around the world. Um, 46 of them are settled in Europe. There are around these 160 students that are from ATSAP going uh, to your schools and uh, from all around the world coming to visit us. And this is only in terms of uh, students, of exchange of students, but you have to uh, keep in mind that uh, we professors also have our research projects, our connections abroad with other um, facility, uh, with other uh, faculty members um, in other schools, and this um, big uh, world map, this global map that we, as we like to call it, is kind of part of the identity of the ETSAP. Because of this amount of connections, we are uh, we offer a very wide range of courses, uh, the ones that you have in your schedule and that you have to start choosing and enrolling uh, by tomorrow. But we also offer uh, short programs, these international workshops, many of them in the summer, some of them uh, in the winter break, um, and also workshops and master classes, so it's an intensive way of, of mixing with other schools, of uh, mixing with people different for, from those of the regular courses. So take please a look uh, once you are settled, first thing first, but once you are settled, please be aware that the school has a parallel agenda of short intensive activities that will enrich um, your presence here. Uh, it's very also characteristic of this school, our focus in cultural activities. Um, every Tuesday uh, at 1.30, so after your classes, uh, there's uh, an activity. We have uh, conferences, there are professors, architects, uh, urban designers from all around the world coming uh, to the school. 
Uh, we offer also uh, many exhibits um, of topics that are related to contemporary issues um, in the hall, but also in this room. So please, uh, it's a must to follow the culture department. Um, it's a department directed by Enrique Granell and Carolina García Estevez, uh, which kind of makes this uh, daily work on uh, having this window uh, on what happens um, in architectural, um, in contemporary architecture, and um, as I say, um, all around. This school has uh, presents a balance between the technology, the technological approach, and the humanist school. Uh, remember the origins that I was mentioning on the Beaux Arts tradition and the, our belonging to the uh, technical um, UPC. So. Keep in mind that it's not about choosing if we are a type or another of architect or if we pick uh, one type of courses or another. The school asks the students uh, uh, enrolled here to have this balance, to have both minds, to be aware that architecture is about understanding a legacy, understanding a past, understanding a theory um, behind the buildings, the cities, but also about knowing how to build, how to make them um, uh, be possible. And also something very characteristic of the School of Architecture in Barcelona is that we have this uh, double condition uh, that it's not uh, so common in Europe or the world that all the students from second to fourth uh, year have to uh, course simultaneously two different um, workshops, two different practical courses, architectural design and urban design. This duality uh, is, as I say, one of the main characteristics of Barcelona. And I'm not being objective, again, because I'm a teacher of the Department of Urban Design, so I tend always to think that urban design is kind of uh, mm, more important than probably it is. The school, uh, you are here because of the undergrad stu uh, studies of architecture, but the school has also room for um, landscape undergrad studies that they are not on the screen, and also of very different um, master programs, the masters in architecture, the masters in landscape, and the masters in design, that hopefully, if you are happy with Barcelona, maybe after this uh, semester or after this year with us, uh, you will kind of ask to come back and study uh, one of these uh, programs. Um, before um, explaining a bit in detail the courses, I would say that it's a joy for us. We are happy um, to have you uh, in the school. Uh, last year, things came to normal uh, somehow, but still we had this session online. So having you in this room all together is kind of um, a joy for us, as I was saying, because uh, it's like everything is finally uh, almost normal. The school has this, uh, the, great, the, the undergrad, the degree in architecture studies is divided in five academic years. For those that come from a Bologna a program uh, is not uh, so uh, common, this scheme. But we have these five years in which the first year, I would say that is for giving like the main concepts for students to be um, aware of what uh, architecture is about. So it's a very instrumental course in which the students learn how to draw, how to calculate, how to approach buildings and city. I would say that uh, first year, uh, is probably uh, not um, the the course that you are uh, here to to course or to or to participate with. But in this uh, range of courses from second to fifth year, we have a great variety that can suit you. Let me uh, point to 
different issues. First one, uh, keep in mind that you are here to experience a different way of learning architecture, urban design, um, whatever. Do not try to reproduce the same pattern of courses, of schedules that you are uh, used to in your home university. What do I want to say with this? If you are students of fourth year in your uh, home university or third year in your home university, do not look only at the same courses the same year in this school. Maybe if you go, uh, if you are a fourth year student but you look to second year or third year students uh, uh, um, courses, you can find something that interests you. So the Erasmus experience, the visiting experience is not about just spending one semester, one year abroad, and then coming back home as anything happened, but to kind of, of shake uh, yourselves. So try to push the limits of your comfort zone and do not feel bad if instead of doing fifth year, you do third year, because probably what you learn in this third year is gonna be so different from what you uh, are used to that it's gonna be a huge uh, learning progress for you, okay? This is one. The second one, uh, the school offers a very wide uh, range of courses taught in English, but there's no room for all of you in an English group. So, uh, because, uh, because of two reasons. One of them is that the English groups are not only for visiting students that are also for local students, and this makes sense because you are coming here to kind of mix with our students. If they were just Erasmus groups, it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't be the real essence of the school. So these groups in English already have students enrolled. And then the second, um, the, the, the second thing that you have to keep in mind is that many of the teachers in the school can speak English, can, can, can use English like easily, fluently. So even if you get placed in a Spanish Catalan group, give it a chance, okay? Uh, try to approach the professor, uh, try to ask if th there's any uh, way to just have some clarification, some way of communicating better and also Keep in mind that you are visiting Barcelona, so you are part uh, of another cultural reality, and learning a language, learning a culture, is kind of also part of the Erasmus experience. Okay, so uh, keep in mind that when picking courses, the, the course, the year, is not a reason, or has not to be the main reason, and the, existing of a, the existence of an English group is not, also, is not only the, the, the reason that can have um, you making this choice, okay? So, uh, these are the, the courses uh, that have the, um, the offer in English. You can, say that, you can see that in the second year, you only have urban design. In third year, we have architectural, urban design, and also drawing representation. Uh, we have a group uh, of history in the first semester and a group of installations in the second. And in fourth year, uh, there's only uh, urban design and also installation. Fifth year is a world apart. You will uh, see uh, now when we kind of go uh, course by course. But somehow, the offer that you can find um, is kind of uh, where the offer in English is more um, broad, I would say, is in the electives and in this uh, uh, fifth year. A very good way to approach the courses, I'm sure that Alicia uh, yesterday explained it to you or gave you this link, is uh, through Instagram. Uh, if you uh, go to the Open it Sub account, uh, you can see that this is a virtual exhibition in which we present the results of the course. We have now posted three editions, so we have uh, Open at Sub 22, Open at Sub 21, Open at Sub 20. So it's a way to see through the exercises that other students did um, uh, last years what the course is about 
and especially what you are expected to kind of achieve if you course uh, these subjects. I asked some of the professors of the school, like outstanding professors, uh, to uh, come and join me today uh, to explain uh, those courses in which they have expertise. Okay, I think that it, uh, it's better if someone from the Department of Architectural Design as uh, Jaime Ferrer, who is the, the um, director of the department, uh, uh, can kind of go course by course and explain you what you will find. With this aim, remember, it's not about uh, emulating the course in which you are enrolling your hometown, but understanding what you are asked to do and which skills do you need to have previously in order to succeed in this course. Okay, so we will start with uh, architectural design. We will go with uh, then after um, with urban design, uh, theory, representation, and the technical uh, courses. So uh, Jaime, if you can join me uh, here and explain about architectural design, thank you. So thank you very much, Eulalia, and welcome you on board of these uh, different courses. I will uh, just briefly explain some of the architectural design studios from the first year to the uh, five year of the uh, Taller Temático uh, studios. Uh, those are uh, some images from the uh, first year course of architectural design. As you can see from the image of the models, the drawings, it's about uh, fundamentals. Uh, maybe it's not, uh, maybe, of course, it's not uh, really a course uh, for you, uh, which uh, I, I guess you are in a more advanced uh, level. Uh, but at least uh, you can see uh, some of the production of the courses. Intensive uh, studio courses, uh, plenty of uh, drawings, uh, models, uh, as uh, you can see. And here uh, you can see some sh uh, images from the courses, from the second year, the third year, and the fourth year. The second year is about construct construction and place, uh, there are, uh, uh, in the previous years, uh, two uh, small exercises uh, with uh, practicing in, uh, uh, with uh, small facilities, with a small building in uh, topographical uh, uh, places or uh, renewal of uh, old constructions. In the third uh, course, you will have the opportunity uh, to uh, assist to a, a different studios in the morning and in the afternoon, more relates uh, to the idea of the housing, uh, relating to the habitat notion uh, in between the city context or in a more territorial scale. And the uh, material from the model, the detailing of the plan is uh, so nicely done in the different uh, courses. In the fourth year, uh, you will work in uh, more facilities building, uh, also from re re reusing all infrastructures or, bu or building with uh, large span buildings. So here you can see the uh, mm, this range are at uh, this progression which is advanced from the second year to third year on to the fourth year. And then in the fifth year you will have uh, some uh, studios we call Taller Temático. In this Taller Temático you have a wide range of uh, studios uh, from uh, a Fab Lab Studio, which is annual, and all the all other studios are uh, just uh, quadrimestral, just one semester. 
One of those is about uh, uh, public facilities built in wood, in what uh, construction. Uh, and other studios, it, it is about related uh, with urban scale and public spaces. Uh, also uh, about uh, urban scale in the afternoon, architectural and reinvention, it is about uh, reusing old infrastructures or uh, uh, construction with, uh, with, with people, architecture, architectos de uh, cabecera. In the second semester, you will have also the Fab Lab, uh, the urban scale with uh, large scale uh, renewal areas, uh, this, this studio, which is an uh, architectural design and urban design uh, studio. Also the visiting studio with uh, uh, an international uh, uh, architect or, or a Spanish well-known architect who will uh, do this course, Jose Maria Sánchez and García. And, and then in the afternoon you have uh, three different studios, uh, a studio related with uh, the metropolitan parks, and about housing and about uh, reusing old infrastructures. So this is the wide range of a different studio. The difference between the fifth year and the previous fourth and third year is the level of the detailing of the courses. Uh, uh, okay. uh, this is some Im image from the uh, Taller Temático and could be uh, quite demanding in terms of uh, producing uh, materials, uh, models, and everything, but uh, as, as you wish, in, depending on your interest, your thematics, and with the advice of your uh, tutor, you will follow one of these courses. So, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Jaime. Thank you, Jaime. I want to stress what Jaime was saying. Please be aware of these uh, demands uh, this, that you need to, that these skills that you need to require for following a, pro, a proyectos course uh, properly. Uh, some of the talleres temáticos in fifth year, uh, for example, the LAC, the computational laboratory, you need some uh, digital skills uh, to succeed in, the, in, the, in following this course. In fifth year, in fourth year, um, sorry, proyectos five and six have a very technical approach. So if you uh, are not kind of um, agile with technology, with construction, please uh, rethink your decision be before enrolling this uh, course. So I insist, it's not that you need to be placed in fourth year, it's that you need to understand which are the requirements, which is the approach of the studio, and which are uh, your previous, which is your background, okay? Um, I will go for uh, Urbanistica, the urban design studios uh, that are from second to uh, fourth year. Urbanistica one and two, first semester and second semester, are more, have an analytical approach, but also aim to intervene in the cities. This is an ideal course. We have a, an English group. It's an ideal course for those that did not course any urban design studio previously. Um, also, it's a good way to know Barcelona. Our case study is this city. So even if you know something about urbanism, it's a good group to come uh, because you will walk at uh, Barcelona, you will learn something about the history of the city in which you are living, uh, and you will have these uh, very express uh, short compact workshops in which we will develop the skills of representing the urban uh, issues. Third year is about designing public space. So here again, you need to have some basis on urban design or an urban approach before enrolling these courses. Public space, uh, designing streets and designing public spaces. Urbanistica 4 is about uh, urban growth. So somehow is about having 
a fragment of the city that is in the limits, in the edges, and imagining how the city could grow um, there. Urbanistica five in fourth year, uh, this I have to uh, again stress, Urbanistica five and six are not possible to follow if you do not have a previous background, minimum background on urban um, uh, culture. Urbanistica five is about refurbishing, redoing cities, so if the fourth is about growing, the, fee, the five is about reinventing, rebuilding the city. And Urbanistica six takes the territorial scale, the big scale, and it's about strategies of design, more than materializing design and doing um, formal uh, projects. For the representation department, I will ask uh, Hector Mendoza, former Vice Dean of International Relations, to join me. Thank you, Hector. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, like uh, Eulalia said, I'm Hector Mendoza. I welcome, welcome all of you in the name of all the professors, architects, and researchers from the Architectural Representation Department. Uh, I would like to uh, just make an exception of what Eulalia said. Uh, drawing um, in the first year, you are welcome, okay? Uh, especially in the second semester. I'm, I will explain a little bit more uh, later. And of course, you are welcome in, in all the, in the other uh, uh, courses too. Um, yeah, like uh, like it was like it's in the rest of the departments, the first year is is like a foundation year, no? Uh, especially for all the students in in Spain that uh, they don't have a previous um, artistic or or drawing uh, training. So the first semester of drawing is is a little bit technical and uh, not very advanced. So if you already passed first year in your own school, don't. Don't do that. But in the second semester, I'll go a little bit further. Uh, we explore um, the more the sensitive drawing, the more creative drawing, the more analytical drawing with um, hand drawing and soft techniques like watercolor, charcoal, and, and uh, pencil drawing. So in that in that sense, you can you can. Uh, uh, register in that course, you're welcome. It's in the second semester. I teach in that course. Just uh, you also do my advertisement here, and uh, you're welcome. And as as long as uh, the the uh, studies uh, advance, all the courses are uh, well. They 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 deepen in the technique of of the representation in the language of of architecture, uh, and. Uh, if in the first year you were doing mainly hand drawing, then from the second year on, you start do, you, using um, digital tools, no? Uh, in uh, representation one, they see mm, geometry, basically, uh, with a series of uh, small exercises in, in order to, to represent complex uh, geometries, but with small uh, scale. Uh, Object, and then in uh, representation two, is uh, basically how to uh, how to communicate, how to uh, define an architecture space with uh, two dimensions, three dimension, and how to make layouts. So it's a little bit technical too. Uh, then the in the third year is uh, it gets more interesting from my point of view. So it's it's about um, uh, visualization of urban spaces or architecture spaces about ma ma how to represent materiality, how to represent the light, sometimes with uh, uh, digital tools, sometimes with uh, also hand drawing. So that would be very interesting also for for uh, foreign students to to attend. And uh, the last uh, representation course is uh, more specific about uh, parametric design. You know? So it's, it's is also uh, like, let's say, like the the last part of the of the training. 
There are also two elective courses that are not here, probably you will show them later, uh, that are very interesting too. Uh, one is, is called Urban Notes, is basically urban sketching and it's also to explore the city and, and uh, communicate with the, with the different local communities and that's a very successful course too and it's very full of foreign uh, students. I don't know if Bruno Seve, the professor, is here, probably he will tell you later more about it. And the other is, um, I think it's imagination. Uh, ideation. Ideation. You know, how, to, uh, how to make creative drawings is also an elective course and I think if I'm not uh, mistaken is Felix Olagure, no? Yeah, the director of the school who teaches that, that course with another professor, Ernest, no? And Ernest uh, Redondo. So very good professors in that course too, so you can have a look at that. Uh, and just to summarize, like I said, first year is mainly foundation, with exception in the second semester that you can train or continue training your hand and your way of observing architecture. And then it gets more complex, you know, uh, how the courses grow. So again, welcome you, and uh, I hope to see you, all of you, soon. Okay. Thank you, Hector. I think that Cesar Saldana from the theory department is going to explain you better Hello. the theory courses. Hi, welcome. Um, so I'm really an adjunct professor in uh, Basis for Theory and History 1. So those are the ones that I will probably explain better. Um, Basis for, for Theory, which is the, the first year uh, course, it's, as its name su suggests, pretty introductory and aims at uh, giving you all the um, foundations for the, for the uh, more advanced theory that the, the other courses offer. So in Basis for Theory, which is a, it has two parts, it's an annual uh, course, we, we'll have a, a, a first more theoretical part uh, in which um, basic uh, keystone concepts will be explained like uh, form, space, um, the city, materiality, technique, scale. Um, we will do like pretty small exercises uh, in which uh, you, the students, will be drawing your environment and those kind of stuff. Um, building up to the second part of the course, well, we will use those very same concepts to do a full-fledged um, analysis of a building uh, located here in Barcelona. Last year it, it was libraries and, and museums, for, for example. No? Um, then, uh, uh, well, um, 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 a main idea in Basis for Theory and in all these uh, courses, of course, is that uh, theory is not useless and history is not useless, okay? So there's a um, relationship between theory and praxis, and that's what we aim to emphasize in all these courses, but especially in the first one. Uh, then History 1 or 2 are a panoramical uh, view of uh, Western uh, architectural tradition mainly the, the, the canon, we, we could say the Western canon. Uh, history one uh, has a really long uh, time span. It starts uh, with ancient Egypt, so we'll see mastabas, pyramids, we'll see Roman and Greek temples, Byzantine architecture, um, Islamic architecture, Romanic, Gothic architecture, up uh, until the 17th century, uh, until the Renaissance and the Baroque. It's a really long uh, time span, uh, so uh, we'll dedicate time to, to the uh, most uh, um, important buildings such as the Pantheon, uh, Acropolis, well, you can imagine. Um, here it's, it's, it's kind of an um, cultural historical narrative, but in history two, which dwells with the more recent uh, history, that is uh, from the uh, Industrial Revolution up to postmodernism, not forgetting, of course, the vanguards and you know high uh, modern movement like you know all the masters like uh, um, Wright, Le Corbusier, Mies, of course. Um, what in history one is a more more well structured narrative in history two, uh, since a lot of information is, is available to us and a lot of archival data and we are more uh, conscious of all the competing currents within architecture and within art. So that's uh, what differentiates a little bit more history one, which is more uh, cultural history, 
from history too, which is more like a sort of critical history. In both histories, the kind of uh, work that will be done will be analyzing buildings graphically and textually. And in history one, uh, you, you may find it especially interesting since the buildings analyzed will be from Barcelona. Even though we will see like universal buildings which are not in Barcelona, we will uh, try to analyze historical buildings in Barcelona, such as Santa Maria del Mar, um, using all the uh, critical tools that uh, we, have, we will have developed in the theoretical lessons. Um, what history one and two do, uh, I mean, uh, a genealogical tour, um, a, a journey uh, through all the Western canon, theory one and two, uh, uh, do also, but with the ideas. It's a sort of uh, history of artistic theory. So um, you may think that our concept of art, for example, is something fixed and historical, but it's, it's not, it's not really. So theory one and theory two aim at uh, making uh, you, the students, um, to, to, to awaken in you that sense of historicity and that sense that theories uh, are in a constant state of flux and, and change, right? So uh, it's, uh, it's a correlative narrative to that in history one and two. If you're more interested in seeing buildings, that's history one and two. If you're more interested in theories of art, in aesthetics, that will be theory, theory one and, and theory two. So those are the two uh, sides of it. History one, uh, theory one, sorry, is like history one because it has a longer time span. It starts with the beginning of Western civilization. Uh, Pedro Azara, for example, uh, starts with mythology and, and Mesopotamian mythology and that, that kind of stuff and, and ends up in the, in the Renaissance. Um, with Marsilio Ficino and, and, and all that, and theory two uh, does the, the same as history two, uh, fo focusing on, on modernity and the problems of modernity and crisis of, of, of modernity, and uh, both um, uh, the, the, the practical side of these courses will be uh, there will be perhaps more writing than, than graphical work, but graphical analysis and work will also be important. I, I want you all to, to realize that, that in all the uh, theory courses, there will always be an, an, an important part of it that will be developing a, a graphic na narrative. So um, I, I, I would also, uh, regarding the electives, uh, maybe r recommend two of them, which uh, are usually successful among uh, uh, visiting students such as you. Um, one would be a history of Spanish architecture, which has a lot of field trips here in Barcelona to many buildings from the modernist tradition, which would be Gaudí, Yuyol, uh, up uh, until the contemporary tradition, like uh, Bofil, um, like Miralles, um, and also, of course, CERT, CODERC, I mean, all the mod modern movement as it took place here. Um, and also, I would like to recommend, uh, and, and with this I'll, I'll, I'll stop, uh, the, um, the, the courses on Western painting uh, by Juan José La Huerta, which will be his last before retirement. Uh, it is also, a, the, that course on uh, um, Western painting is also a panoramic uh, view of Western pa painting from Gioro uh, to Delacroix and then from Courbet to Klein. So I, I find it, uh, for those who's of, of you who are interested in uh, art history, it, it might be really interesting. So uh, thank you very much. <coughs> Oh, thank you, Cesar, for this excellent explanation. I will go quickly through this physics and mathematics. These are first year um, courses that are necessary for our are necessary for our uh, students, uh, local students, in order to have the basic knowledge to kind of go through the technical uh, courses that we will review uh, now. Cosima, Cornado, thank you. Thank you very much, Olavia. So, um, I'm Cosima Cornado. I'm, I'm a professor in the Department of, of Technology. Uh, in, from the Department of Technology, we have some, some lines. We teach uh, construction, we teach physics, we teach structures, 
and also uh, environmental science. So the thing is that today I'm going to present all the construction and structure subjects. So starting from the beginning, uh, we have uh, five construction courses from Brasses Feral Technica, which is the introductory course that explains the basics of construction. Then we have construction one, two, three, and four. Then they all have different objectives. So um, as Aulalia said before, uh, here in ETSAB we have a heavy load of technology uh, knowledge. So uh, starting with the construction subjects, first in Bases para la Tecnica, which is the basics, here we also, we teach about all the necessary knowledge that you need to know before uh, more specific knowledges that are, uh, that are um, explained in the following um, subjects. In construction one, which is in, you will find it in second course, second year, you will have here uh, all, the, all the knowledge about the main systems of the buildings, and that means structure and the building envelope from a basic uh, start. Then in construction two, here uh, we explain all the construction that you need to build the structure of the building. We, we speak about concrete structures, about uh, facades also. On construction three, this is, a more, this is a course focused in a more modern technology, like uh, dry construction, more modern facades. Here in construction three, you will find a, a heavy load of detail working that is very useful for your projects. And finally, on construction four, this is a rehabilitation course that we are centered on um, intervene, intervention on existing buildings. So it's not only restoration from more, um, from more um, a theoretical point of view, but also more practical and technical all these building techniques. And if we talk about the structure, it's more or less the same. It starts with a basic knowledge that is explained in construction, in the, sorry, in the structuras, structures one, that is also very, it has a heavy load of calculations. And structuras two, here they talk about, uh, about construction typology, I'm sorry, structural typologies. Structuras three, um, it's only, not only the design, but also the calculations of steel and concrete structures. And finally, on, on structure four, this course is centered on the foundations of the buildings. So here you have all the, um, all the catalog of structures that you can find in architecture. So now with, where is Carlos? Carlos is there. <laughs> Carlos, <laughs> I was not saying you. He's also, for the, he's also from the technology department, so. Can you hear me if I talk without microphone? Yes. Yeah. Vale, okay, I will use microphone. Um, well, this group of subjects is called uh, conditioning and services. Conditioning and Services 1 is from the second year. Conditioning and Services 2 is from the third year of the degree. And Conditioning and Services 3 is from the fourth year of the degree. The three subjects um, last half a year. All of, them, all of them have six European credits. And um, all of them are taught, are taught uh, both in the first and in the second semester. Although conditioning and services is usually known by its short name, CONDIS, it's much easier. Um, in reality, conditioning and services is the abbreviation of the name uh, environmental conditioning and facility services in architecture. In this sense, conditioning and services one, the one on the left, uh, the one of the second year, focuses above all on the environmental conditioning of architecture based 
on natural means of environmental control. The subject explains uh, the sustainability and environmental design of architect through passive systems. Uh, this contemplates designing uh, with thermal, acoustics, and lighting, but always from a natural energy point of view. On the contrary, the subjects conditioning and services two and three focuses above all on the environmental conditioning of architecture based on artificial systems as well as services, uh, service facilities in architecture. The subject conditioning and services too focus on aspects such as artificial air conditioning systems, as well as water, gas, electricity supply and evacuation facilities, especially in the field of housing, multifamiliar housing buildings. While the subject conditioning and services three focuses on aspects such as artificial lighting installations, artificial air conditioning systems, as well as other, other special service facilities. But in that case, especially focused on the field of public facilities. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Carlos. And finally, some of uh, my colleagues already explained you about the elective courses that are somehow a way in which every student in the school can start drawing um, her own path. Um, you will find that all the departments offer intensifications in many aspects of the courses. There are more the theoretical courses as um, Historia de la Arquitectura Española, as Cesar Saldaña was saying, I, say, I think I would say that now that you are in Barcelona, it's a, it's a good course to um, approach a subject that probably in your home universities uh, is not going to be offered. Um, cities in History, uh, which I have to say that I teach myself, um, is from the department, the department of Urban Design an approach to the culture of how cities uh, are built and refurbished um, uh, along uh, time. There are many technical uh, uh, courses um, related to specific topics or specific materials. There are also representation courses, as uh, Hector was explaining, uh, on hand drawing or on um, imagination. So please uh, review the catalog of elective courses and do not hesitate to contact uh, the professor of each course if you have any doubts. I will wrap up uh, quickly. I think that you got a lot of information in, in this hour. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, Jaime, Hector, Cesar, Cosima, uh, and Carlos uh, for joining uh, me in this presentation and uh, have this own uh, explanation on the, on the thematic areas in which they teach. I think that it's the best way to present the courses. As I was saying, you had a huge amount of information. Now it's uh, up to you to digest it, to try to uh, kind of make this balance between which are your personal interests and which are your obligation with your uh, which obligations with your home university. Um, you have uh, now many of the tutors came, so you can meet them personally personally to discuss which uh, courses uh, could be. Uh, could suit better for you. You know that the school offers you an academic advisor. Uh, this advisor is a professor from different, from each school has a representative from um, a different department. So take the opportunity of having this tutor, not only today to advise you what to enroll uh, tomorrow or the day after, but also during the semester uh, she or he is your reference person in the school uh, if you have any doubts, any problems. Uh, so please uh, use your tutors, your advisors as this uh, reference. Uh, also, uh, you have uh, my contact, you have my email. 
please reach us in the office. Alicia, Natalia, Maria, Lupe are always there. They can help you like instantly. Uh, please let us know if anything does not work. As I was saying um, at the very beginning, Welcome to Barcelona. Welcome to the School of Architecture uh, in Barcelona. We hope that you have a very fruitful fall semester. Um, see you uh, in the rooms, see you in the corridors, and see you in the bar. <laughs>
Chile is Professor Carlos Crosas arriving now, so um, you can also meet him. For all those that are not uh, still uh, in contact with their tutor, I recommend you to do it the sooner you can in order to solve these practical issues or these practical questions that you can have related to the enrollment. That's it. Uh, as I was saying, good semester. <laughs>